Magdalen's Blog 36. My travels around the city often took me through the Jewish quarter, and though I saw no great signs of enlightenment, I did again see the man who caught my eye on that first visit to Sarita's, who had made my young heart beat the faster. Then one day, as I was crossing by the same area, I saw him again, whom I now knew was a young lawyer called Thomas. He was engaged in debate with another man in the forecourt of the synagogue, which was raised a little above the road. There was a small throng listening to the arguments, and attracted mostly by the chance to see Thomas again, I joined the crowd to listen from the back. What I would wish is to understand how and why these things are done, Thomas was saying. Because, he held up his hand to stop the other's instant reply, because in understanding, the best way forward can be achieved. Otherwise, it is just blind blundering along. You should not concern yourself with why, the other man replied, only with the how. That the great Magus can control the spirits is all that matters, and that he will teach us this power also. So you say that he can fly because of this control he has over spirits of the air, asked Thomas. I have seen it with my own eyes, the most incredible thing I ever saw, answered the other. Undoubtedly, Thomas was saying, as my own thoughts recovered from the shock. Yet I cannot see where it all leads, or how it makes him or you a better person for it. To work on some arcane formulation of power is not for me. Besides, I have already found the teacher I have been looking for. I wish you well, but I have no desire to come and meet your Simon Magus. Who was this that could teach one to control the spirits? I could see a use for it, with so many possessed people like Brazilda affected by them even if Thomas couldn't. I was torn at which way to go, attracted by Thomas and the way he spoke on the one hand, but by the possibility of using the powers that the Mega seemed to promise on the other. I stood transfixed in thought. Before I realised it, Thomas and his friends had gone away down the road, and the other group was starting off in the direction I'd been going minutes before. I couldn't let the opportunity pass by completely, and with a few quick steps I succeeded in catching up with them. Can I ask you about the things your friend was discussing back there? I said as I walked beside the last in their group. He looked sideways at me, probably a Jew, I thought, and he seemed surprised at my bold approach. You mean Saul? What about him? Saul, he called. There's a woman here wanting to know about the Magus. Five of them all stopped and turned to see who had accosted them, and the one called Saul took a few paces back towards me. What do you wish to know, priestess? He seemed to sneer that last word at me. I could see no point in beating around the bush. I wondered whether the Magus would teach the powers you spoke of to a woman. Saul studied me with some disdain and answered with a curl of his lip. Women are important to him. All can receive his mission, except the harlot priestesses who turned against his Helena, she who is the bride of the chosen. You witches in your green cloaks would be well advised to stay away when he shows his power tomorrow. Too late, I realised how much a priestess of Astarte was not welcome and I hastily made my excuses and went back along the way to the synagogue. There was no one left around there. Thomas and his friends were long gone. I stopped for a minute, wondering what I should do. I felt alone and rather stupid, and no longer wanting to go on to Sarita's because of the chance of meeting that same group further on. I looked into the entrance of the synagogue, wanting desperately to go inside but I felt even this was denied to me. A lump came into my throat, and I fought back tears that I didn't know the origin of. Had my God rejected me, or was it that I had deserted him? My heart called out a prayer of feelings, without words. 
Reluctantly, I turned my back on the Jewish temple and made my way back to the one I lived in. I would have to complete the drop I had been intending another day. Tomorrow. Tomorrow I would go again. Tomorrow I would go and see what this Magus could do as well, I decided. Helen was not surprised or bothered that I had been unable to take the package because of an unexpected disturbance en route saying that if I could do it early the next day, that would be perfect. I didn't have other duties till my kitchen shift in the evening, so I could make my own arrangements. Perhaps it was foolhardiness, but I thought my determination to follow through the investigation into Simon's powers was worthy perseverance, not to be put off by Saul's ill-informed prejudice. I would go and see and hear the Magus for myself, then, well, I would work that out later. The journey to the dressmaker's house was uneventful. The day was full of promise. There were chickens pecking around outside her front door, which I decided could be taken as a good omen. I delivered the new dress pattern and the materials to make it from. It was still early in the day, time to stay for a drink and a chat. Kamina's house had a well-appointed washroom, and I stopped on the way out for a few minutes to adjust my appearance. In the bottom of another bag, I carried an old brown-black travelling cloak that I had borrowed from Ariane. I swapped it for my own green one, and also spent a couple of minutes adjusting my makeup and hair, greying the russet tresses that might escape from under the hood. Stepping out into the street, I was a slightly bent older lady, possibly a widow, I decided. The synagogue would be a good place to wait if I saw no other signs of the forthcoming display on the way there, which I didn't. There was a gnarled old olive tree just within the low perimeter wall that offered a bit of welcome shade. I sat down under it and waited. It seemed like an age, but no one bothered me. One young man called me mother and asked if I was all right. I nodded with a slightly vacant expression and told him I was waiting for my daughter. She would be here soon, I assured him. He even brought me out a drink of water, and I blessed him for it. Eventually I came by the information I was waiting for. One of the group I had accosted yesterday went by in lively discussion with another young man. Come and see, come and see. He will be in the fruit market square shortly before noon. I knew where that was. We sometimes both bought and sold produce there. 